Hey guys, Mind Lab Gold here. So I'd just like to welcome you all back and thanks again for tuning in. As you all know, in this episode, we're going to go back to that area where we found that piece of gold in the last video. And I explained to you guys that sometimes when we hit virgin ground, when we find gold, that it's very important to dig and process some of the material near it to see what we can find. Anyway, let's go and get into it. So here we are, guys. I've actually brought out some water on site only because I believe the material might be a little bit moist and we want to try and get as much of the heavies and gold as we can um, and classify it here and then take it for panning. So I thought bring some water and that way we can liquefy the material and get that gold really falling down because as you all know, gold is 19.3 times heavier. So when we liquefy it, it'll fall and go down through that classifier through the sieve. I couldn't find me quarter inch sieve, so I've just found uh, one that sort of, it'll do anyway and we've got the detector, we need that because once we're digging this area, we're definitely gonna run over it with that because each time we're gaining depth, we're gaining depth with the detector as well. So what we'll do is we'll, I'll set up the tripod, get the camera up, and then this would be that area here where we hit that little piece of gold with the ironstone. Now, the the, Advantage of this ground here compared to some of those other finds that I found, it's virgin ground. I know the other spots there's a couple that were as well, they're in clay, but this is alluvial wash sitting on that material. So what we're going to do is just, rather than process a cubic metre in volume, because that's a lot of material for me to do, we're just gonna work a square metre around that hole and we're gonna get down to that level where the scoop was in that last video, a little bit above it, and then we're just going to process that material. What I'm hoping to find is a harder base just below that, and if I don't, I'll just keep working down until we get to that, and then get the heavies, hopefully about 100 mils worth of heavy material, classify it here, and then take that material away for panning. And we'll just see what we can find. I just wanted to share something with you guys. Just this shovel here. See how old that is. It's always good to use, use some older tools as well. We've always got modern modern stuff, but just that feeling of using something old. I'd love to get an old gold pan as well. Uh, just the steel ones with the single rim in the bottom. Anyway, let's go and get into it. Okay guys, so just here, you can see I'm gonna mark out a square section on the ground, and it's gonna be roughly a meter by one meter. Now what you can do is Depending on the location, and if you understand loaming as well, taking certain samples from certain areas and certain widths apart, but because this is only a small sample that we're taking, it's just going to be a metre by a metre. Now some people might say, why didn't you sample there, there and there in that metre? But that's sort of pointless because it's only a small area. Whereas if you work in a larger type ground, you would take sample, sample, sample. And with loaming as well, it wasn't just about sampling sideways, so there, there and there, and then going down the hill. Loaming samples also went downwards. So what they used to do was use hessian sacks, big long hessian sacks that were eight feet in length. And they'd dig the eight feet deep holes or they'd sample eight feet of material based on the um, deposits when they're digging down while they're reading the grounds as they go down. And then they would take that foot sample, put it in the hessian sack, tie it. Then they'd take the next foot of sampling, tie it, and then just keep going and going and eventually they'd end up with eight feet of samples um, so that's just another little tip as well but in this explanation it's just going to be this one little spot so that gold was there so we we will just take we'll just dig down there and get that material okay guys so you can see we've got that one meter roughly marked out there. Got the top material over this way so we can bring that back across once we've finished and put all the material back in. And hopefully it won't look as disturbed. Now the top material that I'm not going to worry about, that will get brought up to here. And then the stuff that we're gonna process, dig that in there, gather it in there, classify it. Okay guys, so we've got a little bit of that material away now. It's probably more like 800 by a meter. So you can see that just there. So what I'll do, 
I'll take this little bit here away, just on the side, because that gold was found there, we'll get some of this that's at the bottom of it as well. And you can see now, I've taken that top stuff away, and we're starting to get into that nice, lighter gravel wash. So then once we get that out of the way, then we'll process the material that's below that. Okay guys, so now we're down there. We've taken that off that top lighter stuff. And you can see there, we're starting to get those ironstone showing up. And that's starting to get really solid. So we'll start um, running that through the classifier and get it going. So what we'll do is just make a little um, base for that bucket to sit in. That way it's close to where we're working. So we'll get some water and put in that. Now it won't take long for the gold to fall through there because the material is getting liquefied. It's not staying solid, if that makes sense. For those who know your panning, you'll know about liquefying the material and the gold will just drop. Whereas if you had it like that, the gold's not gonna drop, so. And if there's any clay in there, you need to break that up because clay will stick to the, the gold will stick to it. Just like leaves tumbling down a hill. They'll stick to the clay, so. Okay, that's pretty good just there, guys. So what I'll do is just dump my tailings here, and then we'll scrape that. Okay, guys, so we've got a fair amount of that material done. So as you can see just there on the pile, we're getting some of that ironstone just there. And we know those things, oh sorry I'm puffing a bit, takes it out of you doing that. That's the ironstone there that we identified when we found that piece of gold and we know that's heavy. So I'll just keep continuing to do this hole, get that material in there and then we'll take it off and pan it. We've got that material out like I said, that's the tailings pile just there. Obviously we'll run the detector over that to see if there's any little ones in there. Same down here, we'll do that with the detector. But I wanted to show you guys, if you listen, that's that hard, harder layer that we found the gold in. Hear that now, we've gone through soft stuff. And when you scrape the pick, as I was getting down, it was sort of soft. So we processed a little bit of the soft stuff on this side and all the way down to that hard layer. Now I've scraped all that off this side, down to that hard original layer, so we'll just see what happens. Hey guys, so we've got a fair amount of material now. The bucket's about three quarters full, so I won't be able to do any more. But what we actually done was we hit a soft alluvial layer, which was the top just over there. We took that off and then we processed some of this material here in that next layer that wasn't so compacted all the way down to where we found that hard layer. And then on that side, we've just taken the material and it went down to a clay layer. And same as this, so I went to the clay and then I took about two inches into that clay just there and then just slowly worked out. It took a little bit of effort, as you guys know, red clay takes a fair amount of work. It's like glue, so yeah, anyway, what we'll do, I'll get the detector, swing in there, see if there's any targets that we've moved around. If not, we'll go and pan off and hopefully get some gold. What I've done is just move that stuff there out of the way. Obviously the bucket's big, so we want to get that right out of the way. Uh, I've turned the detector on, I'll plug in the external. 
Okay, that's running reasonably smooth there, so I'll just move you guys up here. Because we've taken all of that material off the top, if we stuck a smaller coil on and increased the sensitivity, or if we got an SDC or something like that, there's a potential chance because we've gained a lot of depth just by digging that out. So, so what we'll do now, guys, is I'll just pack up all this gear, I'll fill that hole there back in, pull it all back in in order, and then make it look like it's um, not disturbed at all. We'll get the bucket, get the gear here, get it all in the car, and we'll head across to a water hole and we'll start panning. See you soon guys. Okay guys, here we are. Actually, no we're not, we're still at the same spot. That's because I wanted to show you guys after I filled that hole back in. See, we've got the bucket and that's still there, containers, and that's the hole filled back in. It sort of looks undisturbed now, and that's what we want. Anyway, let's go. Hey guys, we're here. Well, it's not what I was expecting. Uh, I'm definitely not gonna pan in that. Uh, some people would, it's just not me. That's really black and probably Obviously it's stagnant because it's this time of the year it's um, sort of mid-summer and a lot of water holes are dried up as you can see it's normally right up to the very top and I'm standing right in the bottom of it. Oh well, off to another one. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that guys. So we've got some water. We'll get the gear, won't muck around and let's get this material processed. Okay guys, so I've got the pans there. Got our bucket of material to be processed. And we've got a little frog just there coming in to say good day. He'll soon move out the way. Anyway, let's get the material in. And I got this about, uh, I reckon at least 15 years ago. And um, I liked using this one more. Just your standard black pan with your three riffles. But this one here, what? What it does, you can process material really fast. That's got that angle on there. So when you swirl and all your material around like this, liquefied, your heavies drop into here. That's the gold, the gold catchment just there. And then you can quickly wash the material off like, like that on that side. And then you bring it all around. Your heavies get caught in there. Once you're left with your black sands and the majority of your heavy material, then you simply just work it once it's liquefied, all the gold will go to the lowest part, get caught in your riffles, and then you just work out your black sands like that with your linear motion. But anyway, I won't go too much into that. I probably won't even use that. We'll just get this done, get that material in there, and get into it. I won't go into too many details about panning. Everyone has their own different styles. Um, certainly Matt Calava could um, come out and help pan the material for me if he wanted to because he'd be very fast and very efficient but I've done my fair share of gold panning in the days so hopefully we can um, catch the majority of the gold so let's get into it So what most people do is you've got to go like that with the pan and you've got to get all your heavies to go right down to the very bottom. Now when you're washing your lights off the top like that, you don't want to be going sideways. Just all of your gold into the bottom and then just wash your lights off like that. gold won't move your lights will just run straight off and then you bring all the heavies back and when you're panning you never ever want you don't want this part of the pan to be lower than there always higher so and just a linear motion like that So 
you can see just there we're down to the heavies now a lot of that concentration now I'm not expecting any gold to be in here because when the bucket was full of water I was agitating all of that material so majority of the gold would have gone to the bottom of that but what we'll do we'll just get the rest of that out and then um, what you can do too sometimes if you get a little bit of gold trapped in ironstone it can be with this other material so you can start to pan these into another pan as well and catch those tailings just in case okay so now we're right down to that very last bit what we'll do is just get a little bit of water and now we'll just swirl that Like I said, I'm not expecting gold to be in here because it was the material on the top. Okay. So yeah, we don't have no gold in there, but like I said, the heavies, the real heavies will be in the bottom of that bucket because I agitated that material. So what we'll do, we'll get all of that out now and we'll just process that down. So you can see that material just there, what we'll do, we'll finish processing that and see if we can get some gold in there. So like I said, you need to, you need to liquefy it so all the material is running around together. You don't want it in clumps. Once it liquefies, the gold instantly, it just goes to the bottom. When you start seeing heavies get towards the sides, that's when you bring it all back, work it down. And like I said, once you get down to a certain point, you can always start panning into another pan, just until you start getting your skills, skills up. gold's going to be trapped in there because that's a solid material once it's underwater that's when we bring it back and centralize it so yeah, under the water everything's liquefied and your gold will fall to the lowest point bring it up and then wash those lights off Okay guys, so we won't go much more, I'll just keep that little bit in, I could, I could clean that all the way down to the bottom if I wanted to, some people can, some people can't. So we've got a bit of water in there, and now we'll just, we'll give that a swirl, and hopefully, hopefully we get some gold. I'm pretty confident because of the area, it's a very shallow um, undulated area, and we hit that clay, there we go, so we've got gold showing up just there guys and some beautiful pieces as well. But see what I mean, how the bigger core won't hit it. Even if it's an inch deep, some of that gold you just won't hit. And they are beautiful pieces. Look at that. And that was from about, well you could say it would be a square meter, that material that we processed. But it was only because we identified that um, pay dirt, so to speak, the pay dirt level because we identified that with the detector we knew that hard level was at a certain depth and we know what it was sitting on so yeah that just goes to show you guys but gaining that extra bit of um, depth would certainly make an advantage for any operator but what we have to do I'll just take you guys off the tripod okay 
Here we go, guys. Some nice little bits there. Some chunky bits too. Oh, that looks like it's got a bit of something on it. A little bit of quartz, maybe. That's some good bits of gold there. Yeah, so as you can see, just from that, it's not gonna happen everywhere where you go gold detecting. Uh, the reason it happened there was because I identified it was virgin ground, shallow ground, and it was in a little bit of an undulation. Like, I mean, if you found gold in old gold workings, you really have to know the ground. Um, you could just be, like if you found a piece of gold and it's in turned over material already, your chances aren't gonna be as good because the material's already been worked. It won't happen all the time, but once you start getting that understanding of the grounds, use that technique. Um, to your advantage and it doesn't matter where you are you can take that material with you you can camp there you can pan that material at night time to break up your days with detecting but anyway that is just excellent and i will definitely be getting some more of that material out there's some good size ones there i wouldn't say fine gold that's some chunky little pieces each one of them's definitely a little picker that one there's a little bit smaller but well, that's cool. Anyway, that's very encouraging for myself, actually. I've had spots like this before, um, but it just takes time to get to them. So, anyway, I will pick those up, pack up the gear, and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and shoot through a comment.